We begin with breaking news coming out of Lebanon, where we're getting reports that three Hezbollah members have been killed in another targeted Israeli strike. Now, the attack on a car happened in the southern town of Gandori. It comes a day after a drone attack killed one of Hezbollah's top commanders, Wissam al dawil He's due to be buried in the area soon. Hezbollah says its forces hit a military command headquarters in the city of Safed in northern Israel. The armed group says the attacks are in response to the assassination of its senior members and Hamas's second-in-command, Saleh al-Aruri. We have correspondents on both sides of the Israel-Lebanon border. Laura Khan is standing by in Shlomi, but first let's uh, speak to Zena Khoda, who's in Tyre, in southern Lebanon. Uh, and Zena, what more do we know about this particular incident and the intended target? Well, what we understand is that there were three people in that vehicle, members of the Lebanese armed group Hezbollah. The vehicle was targeted by an apparent Israeli drone strike. Now, that village, Ghandouri, is outside the battleground. The battleground has been the 120-kilometer border between Lebanon and Israel, four to five kilometers deep on each side. So this strikes some 10 kilometers deep inside Lebanon and not very far from where the senior Hezbollah field commander, Wissam al-Tawil, was killed on Monday. So Israel seems to have this new strategy targeting um, commanders, members of uh, the different groups that make up Iran's so-called axis of resistance. Number six, really, in the past two weeks, we saw an Iranian general killed in Syria. Hamas is number two killed in the southern suburbs of Beirut last week. Uh, so Hezbollah right now is in a difficult position because it seems its retaliation, whether the hitting of a air control, traffic control base a few days ago, or even the attack on the command center in Safad, does not seem to be deterring Israel. And Hezbollah's deterrence appears to be eroding. But Hezbollah is in a difficult position because it has made it clear it does not want a major escalation. It says, yes, it is ready to defend Lebanon, to use its full military capabilities if Israel launches an all-out war. But, um, you know, at the same time, Hezbollah, through its words and actions, want to spare this country from a full-blown war that would lead to, you know, a lot, a lot of destruction. If Israel is goading Hezbollah uh, in, into a conflict, there has to be a red line where Hezbollah will say, enough is enough. No doubt. That is what exactly what is Israel is doing. It is testing Hezbollah's red lines, if you like. It is violating the rules of engagement. When they kill Hamas's number two in Beirut, in a stronghold of Hezbollah, it is not just targeting Hamas. It is also targeting Hezbollah. And that is what Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah said. But at the same time, he did mention something. He hinted that the group would be ready for some sort of negotiation, but only after the war or Israel's war on Gaza ends. We know that there is intense diplomatic activity uh, trying to bring about some sort of a diplomatic solution. But the caretaker prime minister, Najib Meati, made it clear yesterday when he said Lebanon is only receiving threats from Western countries. What Lebanon wants is to find some sort of deal to bring about stability. So the Americans, the U.S. government, is trying to uh, broker a, a deal that would delineate the border between Israel and Lebanon. But it seems what Israel wants, and, and some Western countries behind Israel, they want Hezbollah to pull away from that border. And Hezbollah is refusing to do that, refusing even to discuss this possibility until Israel's aggression on Gaza ends. So the cycle of violence is likely to continue. This, es this sporadic escalation along the border is likely to continue, and the danger of a major flare-up is real. Zena Khoda for us there in Tyre, southern Lebanon. Thank you. Let's cross over now to Laura Khan, who's in Shlomi in northern Israel, on the other side of the Lebanese border. And, of course, if we're talking about escalation, Laura, we've heard rocket sirens going off uh, where you are. Just tell us a little bit more about that. Rocket sirens have indeed been going off for the last few hours 
all the way across this 120 kilometer border. Uh, most recently, we've heard a drone flying just overhead uh, for well over an hour. Um, also, some jets screaming over. Uh, we were expecting some sort of hit. Nothing happened yet. Uh, and about an hour ago, we heard some small arms firing. Not exactly where that came from. Uh, but we do know that uh, the Israeli army has released a video showing that a drone had fallen over its northern command about 20 kilometers east of here. Uh, we don't know whether this, what kind of drone it was, whether it was armoured or surveillance, but we do know there were no casualties and minimal damage there. Uh, now, I just want to show you precisely why we're in Shlomi at the moment. I'm going to show you behind me. This is one of the real points of contention between Hezbollah and Israel. There's the big zigzagging wall. That wall's about two years old. There was a, a fence there before that. Uh, but on the left side of it, you have Israel. On the right side of it, you have Lebanon. And just south, you can see a number of houses. That is also Israel. Israel says it wants to push Hezbollah back past the ridge. Some are saying even back 30 kilometers. Certainly not something that Hezbollah is agreeing to at the moment. But you can see there's also been a number of mortar strikes. Um, if you just go left, there's some brown burnt out areas. So we know that's been hit pretty heavily over the past few weeks with mortar. Here in Shalomi, it's also a ghost town. And I'm going to show you just down the road. Uh, we were speaking to somebody who was here today. Um, he is an estate agent, and he said there were 9,000 people living here. Now there's only about 150. There's been a few people straggling back and forth this morning, a couple of cars, some who haven't seen their homes for the last few weeks, and they're only just visiting them now. So, you know, all the way down the street's been empty. There's been a few straggling animals, cats, but really a ghost town. Now, the big question is, as Anthony Blinken, the U.S. Secretary of State, is here trying to row back some of the really hardened military and political rhetoric, as Israel says, it is posturing now for a wider conflict. It said it will try diplomacy, but time is running out for that. Really, the question is, are we going to continue seeing these tit-for-tat strikes between Hezbollah and Israel or is this going to escalate into a much wider conflict, possibly a regional war? That is the question on everyone's lips at the moment. Laura Khan for us there in northern Israel. Thank you.